Hey y'all, what's up? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and I am back for another episode review of Love & Hip Hop Miami. This is Season 3, Episode 7. One call away, y'all. Before we get into this review, as always, normal church announcements. If you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know that you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this goddamn episode here was a hot goddamn key key to me. <laughs> Every goddamn scene was funny as hell to me, y'all. And um, I apologize. I'm late for this review. Y'all want to know why? Um, I actually forgot. I thought I did the shit, but I didn't. And I didn't even realize I didn't do the shit. Honestly, for real, for real. Mm, it's about like two, three hours ago. <laughs> Bitch, I'm not even lying. I really thought I did this review. And for a minute, I was in my feelings. I was like, okay, why ain't my shit showed up yet? Like, what the hell do I have it private? Like, what the hell is going on? But I was like, wait a minute. Bitch, you didn't record that shit. Did you record it? Bitch, no. I forgot. My bad. I forgot. So y'all look here. Here we go with this late ass <laughs> Miami review. Hopefully y'all are ready for the shit. <laughs> Hopefully y'all are ready for this shit because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's go ahead and get right on up into it. So y'all, we start off with Trina and Joy. They are meeting up at the park talking about Trick and his whole arrest. As y'all remember from the last episode, it ended with Trick Daddy getting arrested for cocaine possession, falling behind asleep, I mean, falling asleep behind the wheel and crashing into some shit, right? So Trina and Joy meeting up, which Joy, by the way, that wig, girl, that wig was popping. It was beautiful. I like her with flowy wigs like that, you know, with a little bit of bump to it because that's straight down. It makes it look like a black Morticia Adams or something. But when she got a little body wave or something to it, that wig was real, real, real beautiful. Anyways, they meet up to talk about Trick. Joy say, although they ain't together, she still worry about him. And his health is real important. And what is we going to do? Because we got to get him back on the right track. Because right now, he just ain't on the right track. Trina say she know this nigga need an intervention. Because right now, in his mind, he don't think nothing is wrong. And it's hard to convince a motherfucker that don't think something is wrong, that something is actually goddamn wrong and you need to get some help and you need to do something about your shit so trina's just like you know we need to get together we need to bum rush this thing whatever we got to do just to let him know that you got family out here you got people that love you and that's rooting for you and god damn it you can't self-medicate cocaine and weed and liquor for lupus medications now nigga you have to get your goddamn shit together now during this scene i will say this the one thing that irked me is every time trina was trying to talk was it just me and did it seem like joy was kind of talking over her just a little bit like everything trina was saying trina's like yeah we gotta you know we just gotta talk to him we gotta stay with him. he's like i know but we i did that i already tried to talk to him he didn't listen no trina like okay well yes well we gotta do it again i know but we done did it again and he don't even listen i don't know what we're gonna do she was kind of i i don't know if it was just the, 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 I don't know the what in me that just notices little shit like that, but I don't know. It was kind of irritating. I was like, girl, shut up, shut up. Let her talk. Let her get it out first now. Bucky and JoJo meet up. Bucky and JoJo meet up because, of course, we remember Amada wants to be able to have a relationship with both jojo and bucky without the other one getting pissed off so they meet up to talk about y'all already know bucky still holding on to old feelings about pleasure p and so they sit down and talk about where they went wrong in their friendship bucky is like look here I just want to take it all the way back to Pleasure P. I thought we was cool. Next thing I know, you ghosted me. You ghosted me because of this nigga. Like, what the hell is going on? JoJo comes out her mouth and says that they never had sex before. That it never went any further than them hanging out here. Now, now they did play a clip back when JoJo was like, when she, um, Bucky had asked them, like, what's going on? What are y'all? And JoJo said, that's my man. Now, you saying that's your man? Like, y'all, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you putting it out there like that. I'm just saying. But she claims that they never messed around. Shay Bucky still had an old text message from Pleasure P in her phone and was like, I always wanted to show you this because I couldn't show you this when me and you was beefing, but I sent him a message and was like, why are you messing with her anyway? And he was saying that you just a bird and basically you played yourself and you made yourself look stupid. And I want to show you this because basically me and you getting into it over a dude that didn't give a damn about neither one of us. 
Duh, Bucky. That's what we have been trying to tell your ass from jump. You sitting up here worried about this nigga. He don't want you or JoJo ass. But you making it seem like, aha, uh -huh, it's a bright idea that you just came out with, out your ass with. Look here, we arguing over nigga that don't want now one of us. Now, how about that? Bitch, we been done tried to told you that. You just hard-headed. You don't want to goddamn listen. You don't want to listen. That's your fucking fault. Now, JoJo and her, at the end, they were able to um, amend things. And <sighs> they friends now. They friends now, later on at a modest concert, they hugging, missed each other. I missed you. I missed you. Oh, I miss you. Y'all, the shit just seemed fake to me. It was funny because I was like, these hoes sitting up here missing each other. Bitch, soon as they backs is to each other, they both gonna be talking shit about each other. Goddamn, Buck ain't got no friends. Buck ain't the type of bitch that can keep friends. Because give this shit some time. They're going to be right back into it again. Yo, we got Amara La Negra. She's getting ready for her Boost Mobile concert that's coming up. And so she's with MJ. And they're talking with the people that's going to be doing the lights and the production for everything. And so she said she wants LED lights. She wants comets. She wants rockets. She wants confetti. She wants unicorns. She wants little girls to come out in ballerina costumes that fly off into the air. She wants to be dropped down from outer space and come back up to earth from hell and she just wants to be a mother la negra now this whole time she's saying that she got mj co-sign on the side yep she need that she needs scud rockets she need missiles she needs submarines she needs tambourines she needs all that she had to stop looking this nigga like okay goddamn what else do i want goddamn like he's sitting up there co-signing <laughs> like it's his tour these niggas had matching shirts on that said king and queen i said oh Ain't that cheesy as hell. Now, Amada is super stressed because she has not heard back from the designers who's supposed to be making her outfits. So she doesn't know what's going on with that. She had a dancer that just canceled on her last minute. So she's so stressed out because she doesn't know what she's going to do. And then on top of that, her dad got in contact with her. And her dad wants to have a relationship with her. Now, apparently, you know, her daddy ain't been in her life and her mama... Can't goddamn stand her damn daddy. So MJ asked her, like, you know, well, what's up with mommy? What mommy said about this? She said, well, mommy doesn't know I haven't told mommy yet. And mommy's gonna be so pissed off when she finds out because she doesn't want me to have anything to do with my dad. But I just have to talk to him because I just have some questions. Like, why didn't he want me? I just don't understand why. Now, MJ does tell her that his mama kept him and Bucky away from their dad. And so he feels like every child does deserve to have a relationship with their father. And I completely and totally agree with that. Unless your daddy is batshit crazy out here doing something, he ain't got no goddamn business. Every child does deserve to have that relationship with their father. Now she does say, like she said, her mama gonna be mad at her, but um, she didn't already invite the nigga to her concert to come out. So, you know, she's just hoping she can have a whole conversation with him and that they'll be able to basically she'll be able to get some questions answered that she's always wanted to ask him. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all, we got one of the producers talking to Trick Daddy in his confessional, right? Producer's like, okay, Trick, so you want to tell me what happened? What happened with the whole incident with you getting arrested? Trick Daddy said, mm, nope, zilp, nope, niche, nada. We ain't talking about nothing. Everything I say can and will be used in court against me. I'm pleading a four, five, fifth. I ain't got nothing to say about it. Move the hell on from that. Producer's like, well... Trick, I understand you want to move on it from right now, but we can't do that. I'm just going to have to ask you. I mean, do you, do you, do you think? Trick say, James, 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 look here. You ask me again, it's going to be trouble. Trouble. I said, we ain't talking about no arrests. We ain't talking about no jail. We ain't talking about no handcuffs. We ain't talking about no booking. We ain't talking about no fingerprints. We ain't talking about nothing. Not Nada, not a nothing. And he walks the hell off. The producers is like, oh, well, I mean, okay, well, great. I guess we're done. Later on, Joy and Trina actually go and bum rush up inside Trick's restaurant. Because she say, they said in the beginning that Trick ain't answered back none of their phone calls. They ain't been able to get in contact with him. So they don't know what's going on with him, right? Child, they go to Trick's restaurant, bum rush in there. Alvin at the front, like the goddamn bouncer at the front. Like, um, yes, hi, how can I help you? How can I help you? They're like, oh, we here to see Trick. Excuse me, excuse me, little mama. I'm gonna need you to go ahead and get out the way, girlfriend. He's like, I'm not employees only, employee. He got to feel dumb as hell. All that bullshit she was talking to Trina. <laughs> now you up there serving chicken 
waffles. <laughs> nigga, give me a side of greens and some of them good ass mac and cheese that nigga was back there cooking. Ooh, that shit look good to the motherfucker. So they go back there and they like, nigga, what the hell going on with you? You ain't return nobody phone call. Like, what the hell happened? What's going on? This nigga say he was sleeping in his car. Somebody came, knocked on the window, woke him up, started accusing him of all kind of shit. He ain't know what the hell was going on. I said, Trick, that's right. You better show enough. Goddamn. Say what them lawyers is telling you to say and not say the goddamn truth because it can and will be used against your ass in a court of goddamn law. Trick said, I, I, you bitches won't catch me goddamn slipping. Um, Joy then tells Trina, like, let me talk with him. And Girl, let me tell you this motherfucker going to say. This shit was funny as hell. They're like, nigga, why aren't you, like, when was the last time you went and checked on yourself with the whole lupus? This nigga going to say the, the pharmaceutical companies give you medicines to treat. They don't give you medicines to cure. These medicines medicines got all kind of side effects can cause diarrhea bloating hair loss pregnancy i might be pregnant so i can't take it i said this nigga said he might be pregnant well i mean <laughs> he do look like he about 57 weeks pregnant i ain't gonna even lie that nigga got a belly on him but his point being he ain't gonna take no goddamn medicines but i'm like nigga you already bloated in the face <laughs> You already look swollen and everything else going on, but you might as well take the goddamn medicines. What you got to fucking lose? Joy then tells Trina, like, let me talk to this nigga in private because he out here acting a goddamn fool. I'm going to have to get his ass real quick. So after Trina leaves, she like, look here, motherfucker. You got plenty of people out here relying on your goddamn ass. You got a restaurant full of people, people waiting in line to get in here. You got motherfucking kids. You got all this goddamn shit going on. People is depending on you. People love you and they looking out for your goddamn ass. So, nigga, if you ain't going to save your own goddamn self, do it for the people that love you. This just Also, you care? You care about me? Tell me you care about me. Tell me you love me. She's like, nigga, look. You should already know this shit, but if this is what I got to tell your stupid ass so you can get your shit together, S nigga, yeah, I care. I care about you dying. Shit. What the fuck gonna happen then? Who gonna pay my bills then? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but for real though, nigga, they care. Take that fucking medicine and quit bullshitting. Hood Brad, Chameleon, and Suki all meet up to have drinks. It look like they're at the pool hall or something right there, child. They all talking about the all-girls tour that they want to put together. Now, Hood Brad, she got her straight mindset, business, goal, hat in there. She ready to do this. Like, look here, we need to talk about tour dates, where we going to go, who going to manage us, who going to do this, who going to do that. Like, we need to be on our shit. They want to prove everybody wrong that's been out there saying that they ain't going to make it. They ain't nothing but a bunch of hood bitches that ain't never going to be nothing or whatever, right? So they brainstorming different ideas and different names and stuff like that they can come out with they talking about two dollar holes bitches with attitudes i'm like no baby don't do that don't do that chameleon then comes up with the name baps y'all remember from the movie baps black american princesses and they like oh yeah bitch that's right because bitch we are black american princesses you know what i'm saying yes bitch i'm with it i feel that then sookie over there she and her feelings whatever because she like you know she's just missing her kids and i don't blame her i couldn't i couldn't imagine being an artist and being on the road all the time and being away from your babies i need my son to live every day i need to see him i need to breathe him i need to feel him i need to touch his skin so to be away from my babies who i'd be fucked up too if i was goddamn sucky she breaks down and like some real true riding friends they went over there they console her they hug her let her know that you know what i'm saying we ratchet we some hood bitches but bitch we still here for you we ride for you you want to cry on my shoulder bitch here it go just don't get no know me you know what i'm saying but bitch i'm here for you i love you i just thought it was cute i like the ratchet rangers <laughs> the ratchet rangers chameleon a karate kid sucking the samurai and hood brat smash <laughs> Later on, Hoodbrat goes to see her sister Margie, right? Now, Margie is the one that has her um, other sister's kids, king and queen, right? Now, they sitting down and they talking, and so she ends up telling her sister that, you know, she's getting ready to go on tour. Sis was happy. She was like, that's great, but bitch, you gonna have them with these kids. <laughs> bitch, I'm tired. She like, yeah, that's what I'm trying. I'm ready to go on this tour so I can grind. I can go hard. I can be able to give you all the money and financial needs that you need to take care of these kids. So it's like, bitch, I get that. whoop de whoop I'm feeling that. But, bitch, no. What I'm saying is I need help with these kids, though. Like, I need a break, bitch. Like, my two is enough. Then you add on these other two little motherfuckers. I love them. Oh, I love the hell out of them. But, bitch, I need a break. 
Hood brat, like, yeah, bitch, that's what I'm saying. I'm finna go on tour. I got to grind hard. The competition is there. I got to stay focused, ten toes down. I hate that fucking saying. I got to stay ten toes down, you know what I'm saying, so I can step on these hoes' net, so I get this financial blessing that I know about to come my way. So it's like, no, 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 wait, time out. What I'm saying is, I need you to come get these damn kids. Bitch, I'm tired. How about I have them Tuesday through Friday, you take them Saturday through Monday. Bitch, no, I need you to split the time between the two, not just for filming. Bitch, come get them, and while you're at it, take my two with them. Bitch, I'm tired. I work, I come home, I take care of these goddamn kids. Who I love the hell like these kids with these goddamn kids. Bitch, I need a break. I need extra hands. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I need you to come get these fucking kids is what I mean. Now, is it me? Or were y'all confused in the very beginning when we first met Hood Brat? I thought she had the kids. I thought she had the babies 24-7 full-time them with her kids. But then later on, you see Simone. It's like, okay, she got them, but she don't got them because the sister got them. And so the sister is, you know, they live with the sister, but she got them, no. But then this episode, sis making it seem like, oh, no, you're not there. Like, you there, but you're not there, there. You know what I'm saying? And Hood Brat wasn't really picking up what sis was putting down. Like, she said, I ain't even really got a chance to mourn her, her death because I didn't have to be the strong one and get up here and be a mama to these damn babies, all these babies, I love them, but these damn babies, like, bitch, come help me, you know what I'm saying, so, um, Hood Brat then tells her that she had a conversation with her sister, and, um, her sister said to her, like, if I was to, you know, do this to myself, would you take care of my kids, other sister was like, damn, bitch, really, she said that, how are you ain't tell me, I go, like, what, that blew her away, child, Hood Brat broke, broke down, Sus started breaking down. I was like, oh, Lord, please stop it because I could feel that little lump that was starting to build up right here. It was just sad, y'all. It was just sad. But, yeah, um, Hood Rat really wasn't realizing what Sus was saying. Oh, I, I got it. I got what she was saying. Bitch, come get these kids. Come get these damn kids. I felt you, though. I felt you, though, Sus. <laughs> I'm out of at the house. Sitting down, chilling, whatever, right? Mamiana comes. Oh, baby, I love me some Mamiana. Oh, baby, I love me some Mamiana. <laughs> Mamiana come down. She say, Mamiana, thanks you so much. I, I appreciate you for being there for me. Mommy say, whatever you need me to do. You're hungry. I cook for you. I cook for you. I make the bombs and bananas. You know that. I do anything for you. She's so cute. Y'all love Mamiana. Mamiana makes me miss. My grandmama so much. Oh, I'm about to have a moment. Let me stop, y'all. I love Mamiana. Mamiana, you watching this girl? Mamiana, I love you. I love you, Mamiana. Maybe some empanadas. Girl, send them on over here to Texas. Shit, I need me some of them. So she tells Mamiana, look here, Mommy. If I tell you something, you're not going to get mad, right? Mommy say, hi. It depends. What is it? So I talked to my dad, I talked to Papi, and Papi wants to come and see me, so I invited him out to my show. Mommy said, I know. Why he want to come see you now? Why, because you're mad at Allegra, he wants to come and see you now. He didn't want anything to do with you when he was a baby, when you was a little niña, he didn't want nothing to do with you. Now all of a sudden, you're mad at Allegra, you're Papi, he wants to come in. Now, he wants that at all. That's what he wants. He doesn't want you. He doesn't want a relationship with you. Why now? I don't blame mama. Mama kind of got a guard up. She like, look here. I told this nigga, come help me when I was pregnant with your ass, when I had your ass after all that. You know what this motherfucker told me? He told me to go to Wick. Now all of a sudden you out here popping, you doing a damn thing. Now he want to come back in your life. Fuck your daddy. I'm sure that's what she said. The hell with your, what is it? For you to papi. <laughs> my Hispanic people out there going to be like, how did this bitch know this shit? I, hey, my folk from San Antonio. That's how I know. Is it for you to poppy? Something like that. She said, fuck your daddy. They had a hell with his goddamn ass. He don't want nothing to do with you then. He don't need to have no place to do with you now. Amada's like, well, no, mommy. He apologizes. He said he's sorry. I just want to give him a chance because I was a good daughter. And I just want to ask him, like, I was a good daughter. What does he not want me? Child mommy said, look, you do what the fuck you want to do. But, um, 
That motherfucker gonna do you bad. Don't say I didn't try to tell you. It is what it is. Mama got mad and she walked off. She's like, look here, if I see this motherfucker, I'm gonna spit in his goddamn face. So, uh, you keep his ass on around there. Don't have him nowhere around me. He don't start nothing. It won't be nothing. I ain't mad at your mommy. I don't piss mommy on off. I'm sure she got a blade somewhere. Y'all just don't know it. Y'all, so it's the night of Amada's concert. When she first came in, that black and blue outfit she had on was banging. Who I said, go ahead, body yaddy yaddy. Amada was banging in the outfit. I loved it. I thought it was cute with the fro, the sparkly. It was really cute, y'all. So, goddamn MJ, this nigga looked like he about to co-perform with Drew Hill. <laughs> I said, who the fuck? Y'all, who was that? Somebody put in my comments that this nigga look like Stymie from the Little Rascals. Bitch, I damn near pissed on myself. Because I hadn't, I had to, I was like, who is that? I got the picture, come, girl. I want to say, was it Leah Bean? Leah, was it you, girl? I feel like it was you. I can't remember. Leah, wasn't you whoever it was? Girl, you had my ass rolling. She said this nigga look like Stymie from the Little Rascals. Bitch, I was done. Throw the whole nigga away. I said, well, where the hell is Buckwheat and Alfalfa and the rest of the goddamn crew at? Oody, 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 motherfucker. <laughs> so, of course, I'm not stressed out because she worked so hard to get here. And now, all of a sudden, it's raining outside. And so, she's wondering if anybody's going to show up, if anybody's going to be there. Because, oh, my God, this is my first time doing anything with the Julian. And I'm doing this all on my own. Of course... Amada got out there and she killed it like she always does. Amada is a bomb performer. I've seen some of her performances before. Of course, not in person, but I've seen them on YouTube. And that girl is a performer. She performs her ass off. She is good as hell. I love to go to one of her concerts. I can only stand about, understand about half of what she's saying, but just like all Spanish, I get a little bit of words here and there. Bitch, I can put a whole sentence together. Bada bing, bada boom. That's how I do it like that. But um, she performs. She does good as hell. Bobby is there. Shay and JoJo there looking fake as hell. After the concert, girl, she does, her dad does show up. But, girl, before the concert is over, Amada's out there thanking everybody for showing up. She was like, thank you to my family, to my man, to my mom. You got bucky ass. To your sister. Bitch, she ain't got no sister. She only child. Shut up. And she said it to my dad. Girl, mama face was like. So afterwards, y'all, she talks with her dad and she immediately goes up to him and like breaks down like a little girl. Oh, y'all, it was sad just to see in her face like she actually like reverted back to being that little sad girl that just wanted her daddy. She was crying and asking him like, why weren't you there? Like, why didn't you want me? He said he didn't have papers to get over here in the United States. She said, mom said she would goddamn lie. He said, well, your mama crazy as hell. Don't listen to your mom. This is what happened. Long story short, y'all, you know, she, he apologized for not being there. Says that he wants to be there. She says that she forgives him. They gonna work it out. Hopefully they go to some goddamn family council or something. They can work that shit out. Y'all, the episode ends from there. Mommy, I'm gonna be pissed off as hell when she finds out that she forgave her goddamn daddy. Mommy, I ain't. to pop it. She don't like that goddamn nigga, y'all. <laughs> Y'all, that was the end of the episode right there. Y'all already know if it was anything that I missed. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you and I sure enough appreciate you.